OpenAI has finally done it. They released the model that everyone has been buzzing about. It's gone by many names such as Strawberry and Project Orion, but now they've released it and it's called O1. Now O1 is really good at coding, math, and science, and I'm about to show you everything that it has to offer in today's video. I apologize for this video being a bit scrappy. As I said, I just landed, jumped on Twitter, and I saw that O1 was released, so I had to share it with you guys. So let's see what this model is capable of. By the end of this video, you're going to know everything that you need to know to get started using O1. Let's go ahead and dive in. So just diving in right off the bat, we got this new blog post from OpenAI today and it sparked a lot of conversation over on X, formerly known as Twitter, and here on YouTube. But basically they just announced the OpenAI O1 preview. It can reason through complex tasks and solve harder problems than previous models in science, coding, and math. Now it might take a little bit longer than what we're used to because this model's focus is on getting accurate answers and it's spending more time thinking through the problems before responding much like a person would. With this model, we are getting PhD level accuracy in a lot of different benchmarking tasks within physics, chemistry, and biology. They have tons of great examples here of how they're using O1 for genetics, economics, cognition, quantum physics, and so much more. This has really become a trend. A lot of these LLM companies are now releasing faster and cheaper models. And this one in particular is 80% cheaper than its big brother, O1 Preview. There is so much that O1 can do, and I cannot wait to dive into it with you guys. In order to access O1, you're going to log into your ChatGPT account, go up to the upper left-hand corner here, and then you can select O1 Preview or O1 Mini. If you want to access the older models, you can hover more models right here, and they have a few different versions of GPT-4 still. Let's go with the O1 Preview, and I'm just going to start with an extremely simple idea. Let's see if it can just code Tetris using Python. So let's say create Tetris using Python. Let's see what it can do. So it's thinking, it's assessing acceptability. This is thought for four seconds, and then we get our answer, much like the other answers that we're used to getting with these LLMs. But let's see how it performs once we actually punch this code in. Uh, so it looks like it actually figured this as a way to do Tetris in the terminal, I'm guessing. I'm just going to make sure that it uses Pygame. So I'm going to say make sure to use Pygame when you code this. I don't want it in the terminal. So we're actually going through and clarifying on what we want. Let's see how it does here. This time it thought for six seconds. And it looks like it's actually not in the terminal. The game includes graphical rendering. So it's actually correcting me here. Let's see what we actually get when we do use this code. So I'm just gonna copy this Tetris game code. Now I'm just gonna click over here and add a new file in VS Code. And I'm gonna call it tetris.py, hit enter. And then I'm gonna paste that code. Now it actually generated this pretty quick, just considering that we have 250 lines of code right here. Now let's see if this runs. I might need to install some libraries to get it to run, but I think it should work. Okay, so it does look like I need to install Pygame. I'm gonna use pip install Pygame, hit enter, and let's try to run this again. Still getting an error, so I'm actually just gonna try to see if we can get this to work. I'm just gonna say I've installed Pygame and I'm still, getting this message when running, please fix. I'll paste the error code. So if it's right, this actually appears to be my fault because I'm on my MacBook. I'm not used to using this. So let's go ahead and paste this and just see if it's the wrong environment that we're using. Let's see if we can install Pygame on our current environment. And that looks like it'll do it because it looks like Pygame wasn't installed. Now let's go ahead and run this. And all right, it looks like we've got it working. Let's see if it will actually turn them. No, it's not turning them yet. It doesn't look like. But let's see if it works if we get a full row. All right, and it looks like I wasn't able to do it, but it gave me a game over. 
And before you go any further into this video, I have something I need to tell you about, and that is the AI Foundations community. This is where I learn everything about AI and where I also teach AI alongside my brother who runs a channel on YouTube called AI Foundations. We make AI content for free here on YouTube, and we always have because we love to do it. We love to share these awesome tools. But if you want to up your network and get around some amazing people, I mean, we have a guy that built an app that has 300 million downloads. We have many multi, multi millionaires that join our calls and just talk about their businesses and how AI is affecting the landscape. And then we have a lot of just everyday people as well that are just trying to figure out how AI fits into their work. No matter who you are, you're welcome at AI Foundations, and I highly recommend you join AI Foundations. Use the link below before the price goes up. So for this next example, I'm going to create a portfolio website for myself, and I want it to have a lot of different features. That should be pretty simple for the styling. We've listed out all the website pages, the tech stack, everything it needs. So let's go ahead and send this off and see what kind of results we get out of the gate. It's going to need to create multiple files this time. So I'm curious to see how it handles that. I like how it shows what it's thinking down here a much better approach than the older models, how it's actually showing you how it's going step by step through these different sections, through these different ideas within this. Okay, so it's given us our project structure, and this looks different from what I'm actually used to seeing when it gives us the project tree. So definitely trained it in a unique way, it looks like. We have the base HTML template here, styling with CSS. So this is quite a thorough answer from what I'm used to. Usually it's not gonna give you everything in one go like that. Usually it's gonna take a little bit more time, leave some things out but it actually looks like it was very thorough in producing these results. So let's go ahead and start creating these files. The first one is index.html. Now I'm going to right click index.html and hit open with live server. And just like that, we have our website. Now this isn't implementing the CSS. It looks like, all right, so I'm just going to say, I'm just getting the HTML. No CSS is coming through. Give me the full code for each file without breaking it up. All right. This time it thought for 40 seconds, that was the longest by far, but it actually ended up giving me the full files this time it looks like so i don't have to go around and add to the files and get confused i can just copy and paste them directly now and this should work a little bit better and it's already looking better because it looks like it's actually starting to fill this out properly and it's not just giving me template code it's actually starting to add some text in here let's go ahead and try it again all right, and it looks like it worked. It worked pretty well. Guys, check it out. It's got the toggle switch. Let's see if we actually get dark and light mode with this. And it looks like we do. The only thing that's a little off is this button right here, and I don't know what's going on down here. But so far, the dark and light mode toggle works. Let's see if the menu works. And it does. It actually works really well. Okay, and will the conditional logic work? Yes, it does. We have the conditional logic working so that if I check this, I actually get this message bubble right here. So let's see what happens if I submit this. All right, form submitted successfully. And the get in touch button on the homepage looks like it takes us to the contact me page. So this is very well done. I'm actually really impressed for this only being the second time through that I prompted it. And just a pro tip, it seems to help when you tell it to give you that full code, similar to what we had to do with Claude Sonnet when you're coding using Claude. Now let's see how it does with science and math. I'm gonna go ahead and paste some very challenging SAT questions into here and see how it performs. So I know that the answer to this first one is D. So let's see if it can actually figure that out. And it looks like it got it correct. It got D right here. I'm gonna be honest, I've got no idea what this is talking about, so I won't be able to decide if it arrived on a conclusion in any specific way because I can't do this myself. But if you guys know how this kind of thing works, definitely check this out and let me know if it did a good job of explaining how it got to its answer. I'm just pulling these questions off of this article, 15 of the hardest math questions on the SAT. Let's try this next one right here. 
It's looking for the answer B. So let's see if it can figure that out. I like that spotting potential inconsistencies, revisiting the equation, breaking down the equation. Wow. All right, so this one, once again, broke a record for time thinking, 85 seconds, and it went through this crazy explanation with all of these different steps showing how it's kind of going through completing this equation. And finally, it gets through 10 steps before it decides on answer B, negative three. So it got another one right. All right, let's try this one with a final answer of A. We're looking for A on question three here. So this one says thought for 29 seconds. And if you click on this, you can actually open it up and you can see the steps that it's going through here. It looks like this is timing out. I'm gonna try a quick refresh and it still hasn't given us an answer. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. All right, so we're looking for a final answer of A here. Let's see if it figured that out. And it actually got this one wrong. It gave it D. So this is the first time it's gotten one wrong. I'm gonna give it the answer explanation and see what it thinks. Also add in here, tell me what you did wrong. So it actually claims to have misread the original problem. That's funny. So it did arrive at A after I told it the answer was A, but I wonder what would happen if I would have told it the answer was B or something like that. I'm gonna say, actually, the answer is B, I think. What do you think? Let's double check the calculations to see if the answer is indeed B. And again here, it gives me the conclusion of A. So it got it right after figuring this out. But it did say, addressing your concern, given that you think the answer might be B, let's consider if there's any possibility of that being correct. And it actually takes an alternative approach, reasons through the discrepancy here and how I got this wrong, and then it tests it with a different expression. Finally, it verifies that the answer was indeed A. I'll leave a link to the questions and their answers so that you guys can test this out for yourself below. All right, for this next example, let's see if a one understands scientific principles like Newton's laws. I'm going to combine Newton's laws with coding and I'm gonna see if O1 can code a simulation showing us Newton's laws in a nice presentation. And what I want is for it to have a feature where you can just use the arrow keys to switch between the laws and see how they work in action. So let's go ahead and start this off here. I've just told it to list the laws and then complete the simulations. So I'm trying out this step-by-step -step approach, kind of this chain of thought, similar to how it's actually thinking already, but giving it more of a structure for the order to go about this. So we'll create index.html here, simple as copy and pasting, guys. We can all do that. Simulation for the next file, it's gonna be simulation.js. Paste that. And now let's go ahead and run this index.html. And we have our first law right here. An object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an external force. If I hit the arrow, it's showing the acceleration law for net force. And then if I hit the arrow once more, it's going to show us the balls colliding and they should react to each other. Amazing. So this is great for showing different concepts and you could go in depth and you could actually talk to it and have it show these in different lights with different actions. In fact, let's go ahead and try to make this a little bit more interactive. It looks like we're having an issue here, so I'm just gonna refresh the page, and I'm just going to say, make this more interactive and add tooltips. Think through exactly how you plan on making this fun and educational. So it was pretty flawless on the first go, but I wanna make this game a little bit more interesting. So it's created a list of goals and broken that down into an implementation plan. It doesn't feel like this is just BS. It feels like each one of these sections has a very unique purpose. And I will say that sometimes LLMs are just spitting out like a word salad, it feels like. It doesn't feel like it's really saying anything, but this feels very clear and intentional in the way that it's planning this out. And it honestly feels very natural. So let's go ahead and grab this new index.html and the new simulation code, which is now a whole lot longer. That is quite impressive how many lines of code it's actually generating here in one response. And then I like how it actually explains this. So it's adding a friction control for the first law. 
So this might be just like a slider, a yeah, slider it says. And then here, the, for the force control, users can adjust the applied force, positive or negative, to see its effect on acceleration. And then for the final one, we have mass and velocity controls. Users can adjust the mass and initial velocities of both balls. For the first law, we have our blue ball right here. Let's increase the friction coefficient. Looks like nothing is putting it into motion, so it can't stay in motion if it never was in motion. Let's switch to law number two. Here it's giving us a lot of great stats. It's showing us the velocity. Let's go ahead and turn down the applied force. Oh, now it's going the opposite way because I went negative. Just go zero. Let's try to increase the mass, moving a bit slower and faster. This is kind of fun. And let's try the third law. So for the third law here, I can actually adjust the mass of the individual balls. So let's go ahead and try to increase the mass of just ball one. And we'll increase the velocity of ball one as well. Oh, wow. It's going the wrong way. And it actually did the physics quite nicely. It looks like it adapted to it quite well. Let's see what happens here. Wow. Super realistic physics here. I don't know if these numbers are 100% accurate. Maybe they aren't. Maybe they are. Let me know if you are a physics geek. But overall, this feels very organic, and the fact that this just took two prompts to get right is amazing. I'm guessing that this is the tooltip up here, or maybe this down here is the tooltip. It didn't really put it in like a question mark or a light bulb or anything like that, but that's okay. There's no CSS here. It's just HTML and JavaScript, so it looks pretty solid. All right, I wanted to get this out as fast as possible because I'm curious to hear what you guys think of this as it's hot off the press. So let me know in the comments below, like this video, and definitely don't forget to check out the AI Foundations community before the price goes up. We have a link below for that as well. Can't wait to see what you guys do with 01.